And that, folks, is what it's like to be overstimulated. Whether the input is sensory or emotional or cognitive or social, it just, the input is too much for us. It goes everywhere. And that is how the autistic brain differs from an holistic brain. If that didn't make any sense to you, don't worry, I'm going to explain. Hi there, my name is Megan and this is the Neuro Curiosity Club, the only YouTube channel that I'm aware of that is specifically made for people who think they might be ADHD, they might be autistic, but they're just not sure. Let's get curious about our brains together. So what I'm going to explain to you in this video is something I like to call the bucket theory of autism. Now, I did not invent this. I've seen this lots of different places, but this is kind of my take on it and my way of explaining the bucket theory to other people who it might not come very naturally to you or you may not understand it intuitively. I like to use a very visual example, like the water in the pan being poured into the cups. But like, what the heck does that mean? Why did I do that? What does it represent? Okay, so everybody has different buckets, right? So we have like a cognitive bucket and a social bucket and a sensory bucket, for example. And those buckets hold that type of input, that type of stimulation. Some examples of emotional input that could fill up your emotional bucket are effective empathy, which is the kind of empathy that happens when you kind of just absorb other people's emotions. It could be triggers, you know, if you have a trauma history, you could have triggers that uh, affect you emotionally in a really profound way. And it could just be emotional conversations. Talking about hard stuff with people would be a lot of emotional input in your emotional bucket. As for cognitive, your cognitive bucket could get filled up by things like really difficult but simultaneously boring homework or tedious tasks at work that require a lot of brain effort and focus and like it's very long and continuous and boring but you have to think about it pretty hard. Or it could just look like making a lot of decisions in a row. What am I going to feed my kids for breakfast? What are they all going to wear? What time do we have to leave so we get to daycare in time? X, Y, Z. Examples of sensory input, I think, come a lot more naturally to us, you know, like the seams on our socks, the sound of electricity, or the scent of a really heavy perfume. And social input in the social bucket could look like meeting new people, being asked a lot of different questions in a row, for example, being at an interview, or even just going to a party. I just now realized that I never opened the window to give me decent lighting, so I apologize for the previous lighting. Hopefully this is better. Anyway, holistics tend to have bigger buckets than autistic folks who tend to have smaller buckets. And what this means is that you can pour the exact same amount of water in these glasses, but one glass is going to hold a lot more water and the other glass is going to start to overflow. And what happens when the water overflows is that it starts to pour into different buckets. So what this means is if we have a particular really strong cognitive input, like having to make lots of decisions in a row, it can stress us out to the point that it starts to affect us in a sensory way, or it starts to, to affect us in an emotional way. This is why itchy shirt tags make you actually viscerally angry. This is why I was always so itchy in math. This is why everything is so much more interconnected for autistic folks than it is for holistic folks. There's actually some really interesting research showing that autistic folks do less synaptic pruning than holistic folks, meaning that our synapses have more connections, which means one thing can light up eight other things, whereas in a non-autistic brain, that one thing would just directly light up one other thing. If this isn't making sense, don't worry. We're gonna do a visual demonstration and hopefully that will help it make sense in your head because it definitely helps for me. Okay, so here is an holistic brain, right? You've got your, I don't know, cognitive, emotional, and sensory buckets, right? And then here is some input. Let's say this is an itchy shirt tag, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour it into the sensory bucket, okay? One, two, three, go. The vast majority of that went into the sensory bucket. There was a little spillage, but generally speaking, directly into the sensory bucket, right? That is what an holistic brain is like. But if we go ahead and we pour this sensory input back into the pan and we get out the autistic brain buckets, right? So we have sensory and emotional and cognitive. And we say that exact same itchy shirt tag and we pour it into this sensory cup everywhere. Total mess, total disaster, really hard for us to cope with. The exact same input affects us profoundly differently. 
we perceive that input differently. We process it differently. And oftentimes our behavior looks different because of that different perception and processing. You may have heard people tell you before, well, autism isn't an excuse, right? And it's not, but it is an explanation. And if you've had people in your life not understand how much your autism affects you, maybe show them this video and explain to them, hey, the exact same things you experience feel really different to me. And as a result, I tend to act a little different. It's not an excuse. It's just how my brain works. I hope this video helped you feel seen and understood. And if you would like to work with me, I do have a couple of one-on-one -on -one spots available. I'll go ahead and put that link in the description if you would like to schedule a discovery call with me to talk about what one-on-one -on -one coaching would look like. Thank you so much for joining me for my little demonstration and I will see you next time.